So this morning I want to ask you, what would it feel like to permanently let go of the feeling, I'm afraid I'm not going to have enough? Whatever that enough is, enough time, enough patience, enough health, enough money, I'm afraid I'm going to outlive my money. I'm afraid I'm not saving enough for my retirement. I'm afraid I don't have enough for the mortgage, the kids' college fund, the, the health insurance, and now we need a new car and my job just isn't enough. Living with the frustration and the tension and the constant fear of not enough is a big monster that can get a hold of us, right? I always think of the example of the movie King Kong when he picks up that blonde actress and kind of waves her around, you know, and he decides when he's going to set her down, right? And sometimes our fears are like that. We think they get a hold of us and they decide when they set us down. And yet, wouldn't it feel thrilling to be able to break free from that grip, that monster grip of not enough? There is a way that we can do it, and I'm going to give you today a spiritual law that activates the laws of increase so that you can live in a natural, constant ease and grace and flow of abundance in every area of your life, in prosperity for every area of your life. Most people are afraid of this spiritual law that I'm going to share with you today. Oh, they think it's crazy, they think it doesn't work, or that it can't work, or that it won't work for them. So they don't even try. Or if they try, they try half-heartedly. And what I have for you today is a spiritual practice that will activate this law so you grow your consciousness of prosperity and then grow your life into greater uh, prosperous and more expansive ways. It's a practice that's easy to do, but it takes courage. And that's where most people stop in their tracks or only try it half-heartedly or for a very short while and then abandon it and abandon it. It's not for the faint of heart. It is a spiritual practice for the faithful. Would you like to know what it is? <laughs> well, stay, keep listening. Don't go to sleep like that guy. <laughs> We can, I'll share with you that infallible spiritual law for creating a steady flow of abundance. But first let me say we're continuing in our series on Prosperity's Ten Commandments by uh, the book of the same title by Georgiana Tree West. And in it she teaches an interpretation of each of the Ten Commandments as states of consciousness or as mindsets we can develop that establish permanent prosperity. Over the past few weeks, we've covered the first four commandments, and they deal with building into our consciousness right action toward God. Now, for the remainder of the series, we're going to go through the last six commandments, and they address not only right action toward God, but right action toward humanity and toward each other. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the fifth commandment, which begins with the instruction concerning right action toward our fellow human beings, starting with our parents. It's found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Honor your mother and father. So on the surface, this commandment asks us to, ask with, to act with honor and courtesy and respect and even obedience to our earthly parents. But just as we are grateful to our parents for our earthly life, our physical life, and our guidance and the training and all that they give us, we want to be grateful to God as our divine creator and honor God not only as the source of our life, but as the source of all that's given to us, the source of all that we are. And so Mrs. West, in her book, interprets the fifth commandment, you shall deal honorably with God and with all human instruments through which God's good is manifested for you. So it's honoring God and all humanity and, and, and how we interact in a consciousness of prosperity with that. Her interpretation points us to the spiritual law that I suggested, that I teased you with in the beginning, that can free us from the grip of not enough and put a smack dab in the flow, natural flow of ease and abundance. So what is this spiritual law? It is the spiritual law of circulation, and it's practiced by giving regularly, 
by giving back a portion of what we receive. It's practiced by putting the blessings, blessings we receive back into circulation so they go out and gather an essence of a, of, and a vibration of divinity and come back to us multiplied. It is circulation, not stagnation, that is the secret for prosperity. According to the law of action and reaction, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. There is inflow and there is outflow. There is giving and there is receiving. There is sowing and there is reaping. In Wall Street, it's you have to spend money to make money, right? In sacred text, it's you reap what you sow. But you see the exchange of keeping things in circulation and unrestricted. Now, most of us function like funnels. We're wide open at the top in our capacity to receive. And that funnel comes down into this narrow little opening through which we give out the other side. So we're great receivers and then little tiny flow of giving, very small channel for giving. But equal and, equal and opposite is the law. We have to give so that our, our good can return, come back to us. We have, to keep, we have to keep that flow of circulation, not wide, 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 little, 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 wide, 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 little, 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 little. The Apostle Paul said it best, give as you would prosper. Hmm? Give as you would prosper. Generosity is a state of consciousness that will prosper you, being generous in everything. So the spiritual practice of regular giving is called tithing. Oh my God, she's going to talk to us about money today. Yes, I am. We're going to talk about tithing. What the practice of tithing does is unclog and unrestrict that flow of circulation that universal flow of abundance. It establishes a consciousness of consistent giving, which then establishes a constant, an opening of consistent receiving. Your money will talk to you. Your money is a spiritual instrument that will teach you. Think about it this way. Your body gives you all kinds of feedback about your consciousness of life and health, right? Your relationships give you all kinds of feedback about your consciousness of love and harmony and trust and faith. Your money will give you all kinds of feedback about your consciousness of prosperity, generosity, all of that, abundance. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about it. It establishes a consciousness, tithing establishes a consciousness of consistent giving that opens the way for consistent receiving. And if we don't consciously endeavor to give from what we receive, it creates an imbalance. And your subconscious mind is gonna go to work to restore that balance. You can be receiving over here, but if you're not giving, you're gonna lose something over there. And it's not just about your money or your finances. You could be receiving and having the greatest love of your life and your health is failing. Or you could have the worst health in, in America and you're prospering like crazy, you know? So it, it, but your universal mind wants balance in the universe and it wants balance in the prosperity of your life. So giving can seem counterintuitive to receiving or, or spending can seem counterintuitive to setting up a consciousness of receiving. So I've set up a couple questions to answer for us today to give us an enriched understanding about this amazing power called tithing. I've been tithing since I, since I listened to this prosperity lesson in my 20s, in my 20s. And when, how many of you remember uh, Stretton Smith and the 4T prosperity class? It was tithing of your time, your talent, and your treasure. And you remember how the class worked. It was 12 weeks long. You agreed to tithe, uh, you signed a sacred agreement to tithe 10% so that you could try tithing for 12 weeks. And at the end of the 12 weeks, you didn't feel you were enriched, we would give you your, the church would give you your money back, right? And so I taught that class, I took that class. I was with Stretton when he wrote that class, actually. I'm in chapter four about the real estate agent broker that sold his house. That's me in the 4T story. But anyway, um, one time 
I took the class at Christ Unity, and I decided I would tithe 20%, just to see what happened, because I thought, well, I could ask for half of it back if I needed to, and I, and I really didn't expect to, but anyway, so I tithed 20% for the whole 12 weeks, and how that worked out was I met and married a millionaire. So there you go, all the single ladies. Hmm? I never asked for my money back. You know, it worked out, really, really worked out. All right, so what are the real benefits of, to the spiritual practice of tithing? The number one benefit is it gets you free from that binding fear of not enough because once you practice it, you begin to see flow increase in your life and it releases all that, all that fear of not enough. Spiritually awakened people, us in this room, many of, most of us in this room, Work to build, as Peter said in his meditation, work to build a consciousness, a large consciousness, expansive consciousness reserve of substance, divine substance. We work to build a consciousness of life. We work to build a consciousness of love and wisdom and strength and power. And rather than storing up material possessions, we store up in consciousness all the attributes of spirit. We fill our minds with the all-sufficiency of God and then God does the rest. We work, we work way too hard at life sometimes. You know, if we just allow ourselves to be filled by spirit and then let go and let God do God's part, that's, that's where we store up treasures, Jesus said, in heaven, right? In heaven, in consciousness. Giving activates the spiritual law of circulation. Divine substance is always present and ready for us to use at any time, but the reserve is not material, it's spiritual. God doesn't have dollar bills and cars and mortgage payments stored up somewhere, right? God has what? Divine ideas, substance, the shimmering essence of vibration that we're made in the image and likeness of, that we create, that we vibrate with, and when we align with that and flow that and receive that, that's the spiritual law of circulation that allows us to begin to draw from that invisible, intangible realm of spirit into manifest form in our lives. The practice of tithing is a benefit because it's a continual letting go of what we receive, which keeps us free from a consciousness of hoarding, grasping, and desperation. When you trust enough to let go, and in the beginning, you know, that's why I say your money will teach you. Because in the beginning, when you let go, <laughs> but once you see the spiritual law working, it releases that anxiety, it releases that tension. Stratton said in 4T, as we loosen our grip on our money, our money goes farther than it ever has before, and new sources of income develop. Give ten, you give 10%, which is the tithe amount that, that the ancients said the spiritual law, number 10 was a spiritual number of increase. You give 10%, and the first thing you notice Stratton said, and I found this to be true, you give 10% of your income and somehow mystically the 90% stretches out to become more so that you don't even miss the 10% that you've turned loose of because everything just expands into more. Oh yeah, universal law cushions us and gives us bumper pads. You can just practice this. The universe is not going to let you crash and burn. You know, you can just, remember how many of you drove those little go-karts in those little circles that had all those bumper pads? That's how the universe is. You're in one of those little go-karts when you're practicing tithing <laughs> and you just bump up against something and you get the feedback and you grow your consciousness and it, it works out. A tither is following the fifth commandment to honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all your produce, which is in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. So second question I want to answer is why should we give? Why should we give? And the ancients knew the spiritual law. The prophet uh, Malachi said, and Dorothy Pearson's Prove Me Now ministry, Prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and rain down for you a blessing too big to receive. Can you believe that? Can you feel that? 
The only way you know that is if you've practiced that, if you've tr trusted it and tried it and exercised your life in it. Jesus says, give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. The measure that you give will be the measure you receive. Again, it's that sowing and reaping, giving and receiving. It's essential, essential to adopting a tithing plan is that you have to have a willingness to give. And you have to be willing to give fair value for what you have received. If you can't give a fair portion, then withhold your tithe until you can. Because if you, the main idea is you don't wanna feel obligated to give. You only wanna feel that all of your giving is done in love. It doesn't so much matter the amount um, as it does that you give regularly. If you give with resentment or anxiety or fear or, or uh, begrudgingly, those are repelling energies and they do nothing to advance your consciousness. So also we don't give to get. Tithing is prompted by just this undeniable desire to give back to, because you've been so blessed. You just want to give back. We wanna give as God gives unreservedly unreservedly with no thought of return from where we're doing our giving, you see, because a gift that's given with requirements is not a gift, it's a bribe, hmm? it's a bribe. Mrs. West says, there is no promise of increase unless we give freely, let go entirely, and recognize that we are cooperating with an infallible spiritual law then our gift has a chance to go out and come back multiplied. You know, this isn't, tithing is an advanced teaching. I mean, it just brings it up in you. You know, you have to really be willing. As a young girl, I watched my mom. My, uh, my dad had uh, got cancer when I was, I don't remember if I was somewhere between 10 and 12 years old. And he was the sole support of our family and he couldn't work for almost two years. And so that impacted us significantly. But I would go to church with mom at the Unity of the Oaks in Carmichael and I would watch her put a $5, I would watch her bless her offering and put her $5 bill in the offering every week without fail in, in faith that she would be taken care of, that we would be taken care of and that our family would be supported. And I never saw her afraid, but I did see her standing at the sink doing dishes stop and look up or stop and get still and give thanks. I saw her when she was at her sewing machine making, some, you know, sewing something, stop for a minute and, and, you know, go into the silence, almost like Mr. Fillmore would do just around the house. And um, she never stopped giving. And my dad got well and our family went on to thrive and, and survive. Mr. Fillmore says, we may acknowledge God as the source of supply in silence and in words, but we may not actually show our faith by putting our belief into action. The only way to put belief into action is to express it in tangible form. Tithing is an expression of thankfulness and an actual recognition of God as source. Without priming the pump or giving back, he says, our thankful recognition is purely theoretical. How about that? Bonk. Last question, how much should you give? Well, we talked about that already. The law is 10%, but you, you know, that's some, for some people that's like a big deal. And so you can start by doing what I call escalator giving. Escalator giving. You can start with a definite amount so that you can track and see your results. A definite amount, one or two percent, put that out there, watch to see how your life expands as your giving expands, and then when you feel comfortable at that level, go to three or four percent and, and watch, and eventually you'll get up to 10 percent because you'll just, you can't deny the law. If you're working the law, if it works, if you work it, and if you work it and you track it and you see it, it will, it will teach you. We're not to spend what we do not have or spend beyond our income, but we must use our money. Unused money does not draw interest, dividends, or divine substance. Money is an instrument of spirit, and it's not evil. Unused 
food kept too long spoils, clothes held back for good go out of fashion, unused equipment rusts. We must keep all of our money and our things in circulation because circulation is life and stagnation is, or hoarding is stagnation and loss. Lastly, I, as I was writing this, I thought about, we agree and affirm every week that God is the source of our supply. And we, I think, as unit, longtime Unity students here, understand the law of giving and receiving. But then I asked myself, so why do, we, why do we have so much trouble tithing 10%? Why is that? And, and other, another people, question people ask is, well, is tithing just a way for the church to get money or a charitable organization if you, to get money? No, after this lesson, you can see all that tithing, it's all about you. It's all about growing your consciousness and what you do. Mr. Fillmore says, when I asked why is it so difficult to tithe, his answer was, the acquisitive instinct is still so strong that it blinds us to the realization that we are not only receivers, but dispersers of God's blessings. Hmm? Using money, he says, only for selfish purposes is a form of hoarding. It confines its use for one individual and while that keeps the money in, in itself in while that keeps the money itself in circulation, selfishly holding on to wealth creates congestion in consciousness. It's a closed circuit, and it cannot open up to the full power of what the universe can do for you. You're over here isolating yourself with your own money and your own earnings and your own everything. Divine substance in the form of money is given to us for constructive use and it's not to be hoarded or foolishly wasted. We gather things in the external in the vain effort to avert some imagined shortage in the future. And all we're doing when we do that is projecting our, our fear of what if and our fear of loss and our fear of not having enough into the future. And our thoughts create, right? You know, I always talk about my neighbor in Nashville who had everything in his garage, so I didn't have to keep stuff. I just went over and borrowed it from Bob if I needed it, you know, and then he stored it. Um, it's just like, well, I might not be able to replace that lawnmower someday. I have a gardener for eight years, but I'm keeping the lawnmower just in case. Well, you're just encasing yourself into lack and limitation. You're projecting into the future, not having enough to step up and, and do what you need to do. I can't don't get me started on that. The other thing is when we break free, when you finally do break free, you see the results of the tithing and you break free from that not enough, you can't flip over to the other side and go to the extreme of, of uh, extravagant spending. You know, money's to be used, not abused. Either way, not hoarded and not extravagantly wasted. So, you might be convinced now that you want to try tithing and just thinking, oh my gosh, 10%, that's a lot. So I have a really fun way for you to try tithing 10%, not one, not even escalator giving, and this is how it works. It's called tithing on unexpected income. How many of you have participated in that program before? Oh, we'll have to do it here sometime, but here's how it works. You can try it this week. How it works is you tithe only on unexpected income that you receive for the next week. Unexpe unexpected blessings. So anytime any money comes to you that you were not expecting, you either set aside 10% or write down on a notepad and keep track of the 10%. So let's say you go out to lunch, fully expecting to pay for your lunch, and you're with somebody else, your lunch is 15 bucks and they pick up the tab. So you've had, you just have had $15 of unexpected income. What's 10% of that? $1.50. So you would tithe $1.50. Instead of paying $15 for your lunch, which you expected to pay for, you put $1.50 in the jar at home. Let's say uh, someone has theater tickets to a really great performance you've been wanting to see. They can't go. They call you, ask you if you want the ticket. It's valued at $150. You say yes, take the ticket, go, or thrilled and enjoy, this, enjoy the program. And you get home and instead of $150 value on the ticket, you tithe 10%. $15 of the good that you've received. Something as simple as you go to the grocery store to buy laundry soap and you walk in and it's on sale two for one. 
It's usually $12, you know, for those great big things. And so you get two for the price of one. So you've just had unexpected income of $12. So you tithe $1.20. See how it works? Really fun, really fun. Um, because what this does is it causes you to watch actively for unexpected blessings from the universe. It causes you to look at how the universe is all, already constantly flowing goodness into your life. You just haven't been awake to see it. And now you're using a little fun practice that awakens you to see how great, how blessed you are. And when you turn right around and put that money back into circulation, watch at the end of the week how blessed your life will be. Better health, better relationships, better harmony. Whatever the universe knows is perfect for you, it will return to you. It will return to you. A great way to try out the practice of tithing it is and to see how positively real the results can be. You stay in a constant flow of joy when you practice tithing on unexpected income. We did it in Nashville for a whole month. We had everybody practice it for a whole month and it was really fun and we had a little prayer that you say with it every day and all that. Well, I'll dig it out of my files and maybe we can do it here. Um, you stay in a constant flow of joy that's natural and unrestricted and easy and relaxed and then again, that consciousness is more receptive to universal flow than uh, gripping and worrying and constricting. So. As we close on this fifth commandment, let's remember God is our father, our mother, our divine creator, and that we honor prosperity's fifth commandment when we let ourselves be instruments in the circulation of all of God's blessings. I will be blessing you this week with unexpected, joyful, abundant blessings. And so it is. Amen.